the efforts that we've made at Cornwall College to try to talk about the learning that we see taking place with learners who've got more severe and enduring uh, mental health problems. So to kick us off, so who are we? Um, so I'm, as Yaya said, I'm Val Walton. I'm the project lead for the Plymouth uh, Mental Health Research. But Cornwall College is also involved in the Cornwall project. So, so we, we're involved in, in two ways, really. We already do a lot of work in Cornwall in partnership with the NHS, which is not part of the research, but is for people with more severe and enduring Ill, Ill health. Um, you'll see that Debbie is also with us. Debbie is the personal learning advisor and project coordinator in Plymouth which is good and she's very experienced now, having been with us from phase one. Tina Fox is a key member of the team who can't be with us today, but you're going to see her in video form describing some of the courses we do. So, so what today is about is what I want to, to do with you is, is talk about why we feel or why we felt we needed to show that learners are showing progress in learning. Um, look at how we've done that and how we can describe progress in learning. And mainly really look at how Cornwall College has, has tried to articulate what it looks like. When I say articulate, articulate in words. And I'll come back to why we've done that a little bit further on. And then, um, trying to make links with the research that we're currently involved in where we're moving into phase two so a little bit more background about me so that you can really get the context of this i took over the curriculum leadership for cornwall college of the area which included community learning just over two years ago and when we st I started looking at the community learning courses that were being run in partnership with the NHS, I just couldn't get my head around what the purpose of it was. I'm, I'm looking at some of the delivery and thinking, what are we doing here? Is this education? So as part of my efforts to look at what, what the benefits might be in terms of learning to learn, it led me to try to construct some stages in learning outcomes for the benefit of us all really so that we as tutors could see what our expectations or aspirations might be and for learners to have some idea what our expectations might be at various stages and this is bearing in mind that some learners could be in learning for several years and how do we justify that in terms of continuing funding and in terms of Ofsted. So I'm going to launch us into now just looking a bit more at um, what the Cornwall College programmes look like and start to look at the learning outcomes that we put in place. Um, I thought it'd be interesting first if um, any of you would like to contribute or, or participate now and, and let me know, particularly if you've been working with, with learners with severe and enduring mental health problems, how you look at them in terms of their progress in learning. So I'm not sure if there's anybody there who would like to volunteer a comment. Since we are a small group, um, comments please um, can be made by unmuting your microphones or uh, putting your comments or questions in the chat. Not a problem if not. Um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll start to move on. There'll be other opportunities if you'd like to ask questions. You can stop me and ask questions by raising a hand and Yaya will let me know that there's, there's a question coming. Um, in answer to that question, I'm going to answer the second one myself to, to let you know why it mattered, why it's starting to matter or felt it mattered to me when I took over the leadership role. <clears throat> and that was partly as a manager is how do I justify to my senior managers that I've got learners enrolled for several years? How can I tell them that they're not repeating a learning aim? 
and that they genuinely are making progress in their learning. And then with an impending Ofsted inspection, how do I articulate that to Ofsted when progress is going to look very different in these community learning situations than it might be for 16 to 18 year olds on a study programme? So taking a look at the inspection handbook just very quickly, uh, this, this, this would be the grade descriptor for an outstanding lesson or outstanding learning. And it's quite clear from, from there, Ofsted expectations around progress. Um, and skipping to the very last bit, and their work shows that almost all are making substantial and sustained progress. So again, back to my question, how do we articulate that requirement in terms of community learning and people with more severe enduring ill health? So we'll move on now and look at a little bit more at the courses we're running. And as I said, if you'd like to stop me at any time, just raise hand and we'll, we can answer some questions. So, so we start our journey uh, in inpatient services um, at Bodmin Hospital. I'm going to share with you, I'm just going to stop the slides now and share with you a short video, which is my colleague Tina Fox, who's the team lead for our courses for people with mental health issues. Uh, she's based in, in... The courses that we've got at the hospital are over the four wards. We've got courses on the acute ward, the intensive care psychiatric ward and the two rehabilitation wards. We acknowledge that sometimes patients will get better and move from or relapse and move from ward to ward. We've got two very experienced tutors who work there with the occupational therapists and the social inclusion officers to deliver a, vi a variety of courses, including horticulture, a little bit of DIY, art and craft, and some photography. And they work with um, the learners as well, or the impatients, to meet their needs and design the courses as best they can with them. Um, sometimes they're able to go out on trips as well from the rehabilitation ward to go on photography exhibitions as well and then when the learners are getting better they sometimes access courses that we have running at college or over at Heaven Sent or in the resource centres with support. Sometimes the support can stand back as they progress and become more independent. Okay so, so that's Tina. If anybody has again any questions about what we're doing in the hospital then happy to take them now. Um, I'm going to move us back to my slides. So uh, I think Tina's described to you what those courses might look like. <clears throat> sometimes quite short, sometimes longer. Um, but what, what we thought we could describe the outcomes of these courses is, is what I've just now put on the screen. So we're talking about some very basic outcomes for learning. We, we have, we're not trying to explore the clinical progress, um, that's not our remit, or be able to describe um, in any way the stage of recovery that these people might be experiencing, but really looking at outcomes of learning um, and I think we could describe it as learning to learn. I'll just leave that for you to read for a minute. We have identified <clears throat> actually seven stages of learning um, and on the next slide i'm going to rather i'm not going to try to share with you the aims and outcomes for every stage but what i've done is just picked out um, <clears throat> picked out two features and thought we might follow those through our stages of learning so so stage one is for inpatients and they, those may be 
learners who are not in hospital voluntarily and <clears throat> some may have self-referred stage two is more for those who are perhaps moving through the service and and maybe coming to the rehabilitation wards before being able to return to the community so so that's where we would be with stage two so at the next stage we're hopefully starting to resettle um, with considerable support i think tina mentioned um, the amount of support that the nhs continues to provide at these stages but the the wish that that support will gradually be withdrawn because our aim as educators or as an education provider is is to build independence and resilience and try to empower people to take more control of their lives <clears throat> so our next our next stage again um, moving forward quite possibly now being able to access learning more independently but probably still with support from the NHS so working in <clears throat> the resource centres in Cornwall so, so our next stage we would hope at this stage that learners are perhaps moving with considerably less support um, are much more independent in their ability to attend may well be attending a college course we would still see this being as non-accredited learning but we've probably moved away from community learning funding into the adult education budget funding at stage six which we're going to look at in the next slide a little bit more um, as you see we have much higher expectations and aspirations so we'd expect at this stage learners to be able to attend uh, manage their own attendance so they're attending independently managing their own transport arrangements getting themselves to college and starting to look at um, <clears throat> accreditations that they that they might find useful in terms of being able to seek employment further down the, the line we recognize that for some learners with more severe enduring ill health um, employment certainly e even after seven eight years may yet not be an option for them but we would hope that it's still an aspiration for the majority so we're going to look a little bit more at, at stage six so moving towards accreditation um, and starting to work now with the with Cornwall Adult Education who deliver more accredited IT because we have a specialism we have a land-based college and, and specialisms in the land-based sector we have quite a large horticulture provision near St Hostel and this is dedicated to people who are still struggling to come into learning who still want a really informal atmosphere but but also want to start to achieve qualifications so i'm just going to stop the powerpoint again for a minute and i'm going to share with you tina again who's going to tell you a bit more about what we do at heaven sent Heaven Sent's a working nursery just outside St Hostel next to Wilmartin Museum. We've got courses running from taster courses which are community funded, college certificates and accredited courses from entry three up to level two diplomas. Students there are from a mixture of backgrounds and abilities and ages ranging from 16 through to 60s and 70 and they've gone on to progress to other courses to self-employment to employment some people come back and volunteer at the um, at the nursery as well the tutors there are very experienced and the students also benefit from being able to compete at the Royal Cornwall show and so far they've been very very successful they also run enterprise activities from there selling um, meadows and plant equipment and <coughs> other enterprise goods to um, various outlets around the county right moving back to my slides 
again. So, so at the nursery, just, just running through these little images, if, on the bottom left of your screen, um, Royal Cornwall Show is, is obviously the, the county show in Cornwall, but every year um, it's a massive teamwork task, but every year the students there construct um, really brilliant large exhibits. The, the photo doesn't really do it justice, but, but the main themes at the nursery is rather than growing commercial, although we're trying to persuade them to be slightly more commercial if we're going to earn any money as an enterprise, but really focusing on Cornish species and particularly conservation, uh, conservation of, of Cornish species of wildflowers. Um, and that's what you can see in that photo. So at stage stage six, so this this is this was is what we think the full aims and outcomes might be at this stage of learning. So so just to repeat, these learners are mainly coming volunt voluntarily, some are referral from, from Job Centre um, and other voluntary organisations, but generally self-referring, managing their attendance and having higher, we, we would like them to have higher now aspirations for their ability to do more in the community and in particular their ability to seek, sustain, seek and, and achieve sustained employment. They can often be in this provision for um, up to three years, so three levels of accreditation, which, which, which breaks them in slowly to start at entry level, moving through level one to level two, uh, a level two diploma in horticulture, which, which is a genuine qualification that will achieve employment in the, in the land-based sector. So I'll just give you a minute to read through those rather than reading them for you. So at this point, if anybody would like to, to jump in and ask any questions or have any comments about where we're at or, or the courses that we've just described. Fine, if not, we'll, what I want to move on to now, I think you may recall, I did say at the start that, that we actually have tried to describe seven stages. So I'm going to move on to that now and, and think about what a seventh stage might look like. So, so a learner, a student could be spending perhaps three years gaining higher or progressing in terms of accreditation and gaining higher levels of qualification. But we see a, a final stage um, again, focusing on employment and recognising that not all learners can, with the best will in the world, reach that stage, but there's still no reason not to aspire to reach that stage. So, so the final stage really is about gaining those skills which will enable you to feel confident about applying for work uh, and gaining work, building on experience of volunteering and peer support and giving peer, providing peer support and um, giving time and effort and extra effort into the enterprise at the nursery. It has been reasonably successful over the years in actually enabling people to secure sustained employment. So <clears throat> finally or towards the end really is, is try to make a link between our experience Cornwall College's experience in Cornwall and the way that we've looked at learning from the very earliest stages to to, to later stages is it see how does this link did it help us um, the, these are these are the outcomes that I've compared with the earlier stages where we see perhaps people at stage seven. So again, 
just a reminder, we're talking about people with, with more severe and enduring mental health problems, as opposed to our target group for the community learning mental health research. Um, so so has, has this helped us in terms of mental health research? Well, actually, not really, um, which may seem an odd thing to say, because I think when we started out and, and felt we would like to bid for the projects, we thought what a fantastic opportunity that is to perhaps build on, on some of the thinking that we've already done uh, and move into a slightly different area. But in fact, our partnerships, particularly with the NHS and in the community and we, with um, charities in the, and, and other parts of the voluntary sector, were geared around a different target group of people. So actually what we found is we were starting completely from scratch in both areas, in fact, both, both in Cornwall as a partner of Cornwall Adult Education as part of the HIPPO project, but more particularly in Plymouth, where we find it very difficult to transfer our experiences to achieve what we wanted to achieve in Plymouth. Um, in the mental health research, Cornwall College, in both respects, both in Cornwall and in Plymouth, are part of Group C. And although the, um, the Group C outcomes are still in draft form, I thought it might be useful to put them up here and, and look at where we see perhaps the courses we're running as part of mental health research, or, or perhaps more properly the phase one courses, relate to what we've been doing with our other target group of learners. And I think that there, there is then some relevance in terms of the stages or our expectations about somebody who's recovering very well from more severe and enduring in health and those who have mild to moderate mental health problems and our expectations really and aspirations for those people in, in both those groups. And um, that's uh, at this point that's really all I wanted to say. I, I want to leave you with a final slide and, and would definitely invite your comments and your thoughts. I think one thing that comes across or we would like to put across from both areas that we're working in is that we, we need to keep in mind our expectations and aspirations and we need to challenge learners and we don't want anyone to be stuck at what we might call our stage four of learning because it's a nice place to be. It's a nice place to be in the comfort of an NHS resource centre with support around you, having a nice time with people you've known for a couple of years and you're doing art and craft. But actually, in learning terms, you're not really moving forward. And I try to bear in mind the whole time that we are actually an education provider. And for many reasons, apart from education, it's very important to keep challenging people to move forward and that a comfortable place is not necessarily the place to stay. So, so that's where I'd like to end. And if anybody would like to ask me any questions or has any thoughts or comments, that would be great. I'm going to stop sharing the screen with you now, uh, but, I, but I'd like you to keep that image in your head. Okay, so, so back with you all without sharing. Is there anything anybody would like to ask me or, or say about what, we've, what I've been talking about? Anything in I can't see the chat, like, Yaya, is anything in the chat? There is nothing there at the moment. Um, I know Katina's with, with us, um, but also engaged <laughs> in, in other things um, as usual. I, I'd be interested in, um, you know, any responses that you've had from, uh, I mean, you mentioned that when you were developing the seven stage model as something useful to demonstrate that kind of um, the, the progressions, the aims of learning and also the progressions at, at um, 
being being something that is incremental when it comes to people that these courses were aimed at, which is um, severe and enduring. And and how how's that been received? Because um, my understanding is that this is something you developed a for your um, leaders at the college as well as Ofsted. Uh, yes, we and, and and I would say that I've probably meant to say at the start, not based on any particular theories, but also we recognise that progression in learning is not linear. So. We, we can't label somebody in hospital as being only able to do those things. I think I need to, to make that clear. Um, it was, I did, when we did have an Ofsted inspection, because Cornwall College is so large, uh, they said they were going to look at community learning, but really they hadn't allocated much time. So I did actually uh, <laughs> force them, if you like, to, to look at it. And, and it was quite well received by them because the inspector they had somebody specializing in adult education but to be honest he really struggled to understand what we were trying to do but but the upshot of that was that the inspector actually then visited a class um, not in hospital because that would have taken too long to arrange but visited a, um, a class in the community and actually was very impressed then about the way the tutor was working and the sort of objectives the, because those outcomes need to be transferred into individual objectives that are meaningful to each individual person. So they might not be focusing on all of those. They might just be focusing on one or two things. Uh, and, and we had an excellent result from that. So I was quite pleased. You, you've, you sometimes wonder whether you should stand back and just hide away and let them go away again. But, but I was quite pleased that we, we drew their attention to it. And um, when, when we put the outcomes together, we did involve the NHS as well. So we took advice from our, our colleagues there and the occupational therapists to say, oh, do you think we're on the right lines? We also tested it. So, so we've had those in place for a couple of years. So, so we spent a year really mapping that into RAPA and letting the learners have a look at it and say, what do you think? Do you think this is about right? For where you are at the moment um, some mixed responses and and very clear that you know don't label me in, in that linear fashion because there are some things i can do on that list already therefore my aspiration is to, to is, is to work at a higher level and set my objective at a more aspirational level and i think that's the important thing to bear in mind with these things if you're not careful you have a model and you stick to it and then that does nobody any good so so yeah Thank you very much for that, um, Val. Um, we do have um, a little bit more time. Um, we, uh, there is a message from um, Nicola Arben um, to say that she got caught in, in other um, things. So um, we'll have to leave us now and we'll catch with the recording, uh, catch up through the recording later. Um, so yes I, so we finished a bit early I, I kind of built in time just in case i know that when we talked earlier we weren't sure whether we'd have many participants so so we sort of built in a bit of time for that but but that's fine i think from our point of view